Hello and welcome to the AnyDesk Lounge screencast. We celebrate the highly anticipated release of AnyDesk 7.1 for Windows and our new and improved management console, My AnyDesk V2. My name is Emil and I'm a product manager here at AnyDesk. I will be hosting this video to give you an insight on what to expect with this major release. So let's get started. But first, an overview. We will start with a short intro on AnyDisk itself, who we are and what we stand for. Second, a quick explanation of the tier system built into my AnyDisk. Afterwards, we will jump into our first big announcement, our new way to license clients and how client management in my AnyDisk v2 will look like. The second big announcement is AnyDisk user accounts and the user management with single sign-on user groups, roles, and the My AnyDisk access control system. Last but not least, I will show you a quick demonstration of My AnyDisk V2 itself. So let's go! We are really glad to have you on board and that you have decided for the most reliable remote desktop solution on the market. Together with you, many users around the world have decided for AnyDisk and that makes us one of the fastest growing companies in Europe. We have five locations around the globe, customers in over 190 countries, and have more than 500 million installations out there. And our customers are having more than 900 million sessions each month. And in order to have these amounts of customers, the whole AnyDesk team is working really hard to provide the best service and the best onboarding experience to our customers. That's why we are really glad to present to you our new updates and the features we have been working on. Part of my AnyDesk V2 are tiers. Tiers define which setup process a user has to finish and depend upon the license the user has. There are three tiers, single, team, and organization. The single tier are all single user licenses and basically means that you simply log in and get started. The Teams tier means that you have your very own team. After the first login, you will have to set up your team and only then you can invite additional users to join you. All users within a team share the same license and have access to the same My AnyDesk V2 interfaces. The Organization tier is another step up. Organization owners will need to go through a quick organization setup process. After this step, you receive your very own login screen. If you want to log into your organization, you need to choose Sign in with SSO and authenticate your organization name. An organization enables you to have access to our core user management, to which we'll come to in a second. There are also huge upsides when it comes to the AnyDesk user account and user management. User accounts themselves can be secured via multi-factor authentication and all receive their very own personal address book. You log in with the same credentials in My AnyDesk V2 as well as the Windows client. As an administrator, you can group your users into groups and child groups, for example into departments. You can also assign roles and use our permission set feature for complete access control which user can see what within my AnyDesk V2. Of course, management of a large number of users can be really tedious. Therefore, we have the complete support for Active Directory setups via LDAP and IDP. Everything can be managed from a central location. And now let's jump into my AnyDesk V2 itself and show what the organization is capable of. So, we are now in My AnyDesk V2. What you see here is the default login screen. However, because I want to show you the complete capabilities of a My AnyDesk organization, we will need to sign in with SSO. Let's do that. Now my organization name is requested. Thankfully, I have something ready. 
Now we're on the organization login screen. My credentials need to be typed out. Let's click sign in. And now we're greeted with the dashboard, which is currently still work in progress. However, I want your focus to be on the navigation bar. What you see in the upper hall are all pages related to user management. So we see users, groups, roles, permission set. Underneath that, we see all client related pages, address books, clients, sessions, and builds, which is custom client configurations. And underneath that, we see certain administrational pages like organization and license. Let's start with the users page. What I now see are all users within my organization. All of them are listed out. This view, as well as all other views I'm going to show you, can be restricted via permission sets. Let's search for my site. Click on it. Now I'm on my own detail page, the Emmet Klopic detail page. What you see here are all user attributes. So I see my first name my last name, I see that I am enabled. As an administrator, you can enable and disable users. And I can see my email address, which is also verified. What you see here is that I'm also linked to the role owner. And you can see that my, I have multi-factor authentication currently disabled. If we click on groups, I can also add myself to a group. Let's, for example, do IT. Finish edit. As you can see here, now I'm part of the group IT. Let's take a look at groups. Groups are also straightforward. So what you see here are all parent groups or highest order groups listed out. Let's see hotels, for example. Under hotel, you can see that there are certain child groups associated to it, for example, administration, cooks and maids. And I can see who is a member of the group hotel. You can also see that the role user is assigned to this group, which means that every single member of this group, as well as all members of the child groups, are automatically assigned the role user. Under roles, I can see that there are a bunch of different roles. Some of them are marked as protected. We ship automatically with certain default roles. Those default roles are by default also protected because they should not be deleted. Let's take a look at Accountant. Under Accountant, I can see all role-related attributes. I can see, for example, that this is not a federated role, therefore not connected to any active directory. I can see that there is a permission set of the same name assigned to it. And I can see that this Accountant is also linked to the group Hotel Mains. I can also see that Max Mustermann is directly assigned to this role. If we now take a look at the permission sets, we see a list of all different permission sets. And for example, if we take a look at accountant, you can see that accountants cannot do very much within MyAnyDisk. They can just see license information, they can see the invoices, and they can see the organizational information. Everything else is not accessible to them. If we now go back to the permission sets, we can even create new permission sets simply by clicking Create Permission Set. Under Address Books, I can see my personal address book, and I can see organizational address books, which are shared among all licensed clients and all users within the organization. I can even edit this address book and all tags within it. Under Clients, I can see all explicit clients, meaning licensed clients, and I can see all implicit clients clients in which one of my users are currently logged in. Let's click on it. And again, we have a detailed page. We can see all sessions that were coming from or to the client, and we can see the current status, which is offline. Under sessions, I can see all sessions that happened from or to a licensed client of mine, or a client where one of my users was logged into. Under builds, I can see all builds that were created, meaning custom client configurations, and I can even create new builds. 
This is the new redesigned custom client generator. And underneath that, you can also see that session permission profiles is something that can be set up here. Once set up, you can even see the build configuration here. You can edit the build and you can even define a download button. On the organization, we have the most important part, user provider. User provider defines where users are coming from. Under admin, it is a manual task done on the users page. Under LDAP, you have an Active Directory connected. And under IDP, you have a cloud-based Active Directory connected. Both of these options require a standard setup procedure. As you can see here, for LDAP, you can even import roles. And you have certain user attribute mappers to ease up the setup process. Under IDP, again, we have a standard setup process and we have IDP mappers, which can be created to automatically synchronize roles within the Active Directory with roles within my index. So, to wrap up, the benefits for IT departments are clear. Improved IT administration, enhanced user management with user roles and groups and access control, added security layers with our client features, and increased efficiency with LDAP and IDP setups. Thank you very much. Are you in need of a personal consultation? Please reach out to our sales team. Uh-oh.